Example 6. Infinite discontinuity at an interior point. Evaluate the integral from 0 to 3 of dx over x minus 1 to the 2 thirds. This function has a discontinuity in an interior point. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. 1 makes the denominator 0. So we're going to have to work away our way around that. And we're going to do the limit as b approaches 1 from the left of 0 to b of dx over x minus 1 to the 2 thirds. And we're coming from the left because we're going from 0 to 1. That's on the left hand side of 1. And then we have plus the limit as b approaches 1 from the right of the integral from b to 3 of dx over x minus 1 to the 2 thirds. Now let's look at this function. It's really x minus 1 to the negative 2 thirds. And if we take the integral, we're going to add 1. So that's 3 thirds. And we have x minus 1 to the 1 third, but then times 3. That gives us the limit as b approaches 1 from the left of 3 times x minus 1 to the 1 third evaluated from 0 to b. And then plus the limit as b approaches 1 from the right of 3 times x minus 1 to the 1 third. And now we have the limit as b approaches 1 from the left of 3 times b minus 1 to the 1 third minus 3 times 0 minus 1 to the 1 third plus the limit as b approaches 1 from the right of 3 times, uh, this is going to be evaluated from b to 3, of uh, 3 minus 1 to the 1 third, and then minus 3 times b minus 1 to the 1 third. Well now when we plug in all the 1's, this becomes 0. We have negative 3 uh, times negative 1 to the 1 third, and then plus we have 3 times the third root of 2, when we take 3 minus 1, and then minus 0 when we plug 1 into here. Uh, we have 3 plus 3 times the third root of 2. Example 7, infinite discontinuity at an endpoint. Evaluate the integral from 1 to 2 of dx over x minus 2. We have the limit as b approaches 2. 2 makes the denominator 0, so we're going to have to approach 2 from the left hand side, going from 1 to 2, that's on the left hand side. And then we have the integral from 1 to b of dx over x minus 2. Well that goes to the limit as b approaches 2 from the left of the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 2 and we're evaluating this from 1 to b. That goes to the limit as b approaches 2 from the left of the natural log of the absolute value of b minus 2 and then minus the natural log of negative 1. Well, that goes to the limit as b approaches 2 from the left of the natural log of absolute value of b minus 2 and then uh, this is a natural log of 1, which is 0. Now, imagine approaching 2 from the left and getting very, very close to 2. We'd have 1.9999 minus 2. That's very, very close to 2. So that goes to the natural log of the absolute value of negative uh, 0 0.0001, which is... Then we take the absolute value and we get natural log of 0 0.0001. Of course, that's a very small number. Now let's take a look at the graph of natural log. It looks like this. And as x gets closer and closer to 0, the graph is shooting down to negative infinity. So this evaluates to negative infinity. So we say that this integral diverges. <clears throat> Test for convergence and divergence. 
When we cannot evaluate an improper integral directly, often the case in practice, we first try to determine whether it converges or diverges. If the integral diverges, that's the end of the story. If it converges, we can then use numerical methods to approximate its value. In such cases, the following theorem is useful. Theorem 6. Comparison test. Let f and g be continuous on a to infinity, with 0 less than or equal to f of x less than or equal to g of x, for all x greater than or equal to a. So what's that saying is, we have this graph of, let's say, g of x. So here's g of x right here. And it, it has to be a decreasing function. f of x is said to be below g of x for all values. So it's below all the time. So here is g of x, and f of x is below g of x for all a. f of x converges if g of x converges. So if g of x is falling fast enough to create this finite area, then f of x must be falling fast enough as well because it's below g of x. G of x diverges if f of x diverges. So if f of x does not converge to a value and g of x is above that, even greater value, then uh, it will not converge as well. It, it will diverge. Example 8, investigating convergence. Does the integral, integral from 1 to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx converge? Well, we can't take the integral of e to the negative x squared. We, we don't know how to do that. But what, what we can take the integral of is e to the negative x. That's simple enough that we can handle this. Well, 0 is less than or equal to e to the negative x squared is less than or equal to e to the x, e to, or excuse me, to the negative x. Now, e to the x, negative x is bigger than e to the negative x squared the entire time. Let's take a look at the graph of both. Let's go to y equals, and let's put the, the e to the negative x squared in. So we have e to the negative x squared. And then let's put the second function in y2. We have e to the negative x. And the first one will be graph. Then uh, the one we came up with will be graph. So here is e to the negative x squared. And then we have e to the negative x coming down like that. Let's zoom in because we can't really see it well enough to decide what's going on here. I like zoom box. gives me a lot of control. And let's zoom in on the positive side because we're going from 1 to infinity. There's e to the negative x squared. And then we're saying that e to the negative x squared is actually below e to the negative x. But for a little bit of time, it's actually above. But eventually, uh, this one dips down below. Now we just have to show that e to the negative x converges to show that this one converges. We have the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral from 1 to b of e to the negative x dx. That's the limit as b approaches infinity of negative e to the negative x evaluated from 1 to b. That is the limit as b approaches infinity of negative e to the negative b and then plus e to the negative 1. Now we have limit as b approaches infinity of negative 1 over e to the b plus 1 over e, which when we plug infinity into this b makes the denominator go to infinity, but then makes this fraction go to 0. So this is 1 over e which means our original function converges because e to the negative x converges. In exercises 31 and 34, use a comparison test to determine whether the integral converges or diverges. Let's look at uh, x to the third, 1 over x to the third. We have 1 over x to the third plus 1 is actually less than or equal to 1 over x to the third. If you have a bigger denominator, and this denominator will be one bigger than x to the third. If you have a bigger denominator, you're going to have a smaller number. So we have the limit as b approaches infinity 
of the integral from 1 to b of dx over x to the third. And then we have the limit as b approaches infinity of, let's see, we have x to the negative 3. We're going to add 1 to that. That's x to the negative 2 times negative 1 half. So we have negative 1 half x to the negative 2 evaluated from 1 to b. We have the limit as b approaches infinity of negative 1 over 2b squared. When you plug b in, you get b to the negative 2. That will go down to the denominator. And then plus, uh, plus 1 half. When we plug infinity in for this, this is going to go to 0, and we get 1 half. So this one converges as well.